Live from KSA 12. Good <clears throat> morning, San Antonio starts right now. Sorry about that. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even do that on live TV. Good You're morning. ready. <laughs> it is Tuesday. It is December 15th. Be honest, we're all just a little bit nosy when it comes to stuff maybe that we're doing on our day to day mm -hmm. lives, like what are we Googling? Right. So now this is being tracked, and we actually have results for San Antonio as well. Yeah, because they're tracking everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything so here are the top trending search results for 2024 our city number one no big surprise yeah election results 2020 uh, number two also not a surprise coronavirus and number three is really not a surprise either because mm -hmm. uh, this is earlier in the year when you know people were wanting to know more about kobe bryant biggest school district in the city going online starting back in the spring so nisd portal was the number four search result Number five is Zoom for San Antonio, so maybe people looking for help with that. Yep. Mm -hmm. it's number six, who is winning the election? And seven, coronavirus-related as coronavirus symptoms. Uh, coronavirus update at number eight. Uh, Naira, Naya Rivera, who was uh, killed earlier this year also. She, she made drowned number, drowned, in California. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, she nine. was a star of Glee. And then for some reason, yeah. Kim Jong-un wound up as the 10th most Google-searched person in San Antonio this year. So what's interesting about this is when compared to the searches for Texas, right. as number 10, uh, they had Chadwick Bozeman. Right. Uh, which, you know, okay, because it was timely. Uh, a lot of people were talking about it. And, you know, they, the re yeah. The rest of the results are more or less the same. Mm -hmm. um, add in Hurricane Laura, right. though, as number eight. But yeah, Chadwick Boseman versus, I just don't, I don't understand what the fascination was with Kim Jong-un. In San Antonio. I was trying to go hmm. back and, and think if there was any, like, social media thing that was going around right. here. Or did somebody uh, name a breakfast taco after him or something? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what was happening there. <laughs> I was wondering if it had something to do with Fiesta being canceled, if there was something with was his name. North Korea responsible for that? <laughs> I don't know. I have I'm, no I'm idea. Grasping the straws here. <laughs> you got us now. <laughs> Let's look at today's nine at nine. The United States has become the first country to register 300,000 deaths from COVID-19. Experts fear the country could surpass the total number of American fatalities from World War II. Nearly 6,000 doses of Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine have arrived at UT Health San Antonio yesterday. And this afternoon, doctors, nurses, and care team members will receive their first dose. The Electoral College has confirmed Joe Biden as the nation's next president. Presidential electors gave Biden 306 electoral votes to President Donald Trump's 232. The president-elect is headed to Georgia today. He will be campaigning for Democratic Senate candidates John Ossoff and Reverend Raphael Warnock. Attorney General William Barr is resigning. President Donald Trump made the announcement on Twitter yesterday saying Barr will, quote, be leaving just before Christmas to spend the holidays with his family, end quote. Open enrollment for healthcare.gov ends today. As of December 5th, more than 4 million Americans had signed up for plans under the Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare. Today, a federal court in Houston will consider whether to invalidate a program that shields immigrants brought to the U.S. as children from deportation. The challenge concerns President Barack Obama's original memorandum creating the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program. Lawmakers are expected to unveil a $1.4 trillion spending bill today. It will fund federal agencies until the end of September. Congress must pass the measure by Friday at midnight to avoid a government shutdown. If you're planning to send gifts to your loved ones in time for Christmas, today may be the last day to send them. Today marks a deadline for regular ground shipments via UPS, FedEx, and the U.S. Postal Service. And that's today's 9 at 9. All your stuff is out, right? What? For sending, oh, yeah. sending oh, yeah. it out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew what you were talking about. Sorry, I was just thrown off there for a second. I'm still <laughs> trying to figure out this Kim, Kim Jong-un. Jong <laughs> Somebody said maybe there was a rocket man taco because there was a, you know, he was a threat earlier this huh, maybe. year. Maybe. We're going to have to dig deeper. Or we could let it go. Uh, that too. <laughs> 43 degrees out there with a live cam right now. Yeah, chilly, uh, a little cloudy. Obviously, it's foggy, too. We're seeing some fog in spots, too. Let's check in on the visibility here around the area right now. In San Antonio, we're down to about three miles visibility. Hondo is a spot that really is seeing some fog at this hour, down to about three-tenths of a mile. Uvalde down, too. So this fog's going to last another couple of hours. Cloud cover will last through about midday, and that's sort of my concern here. If these clouds hang on 
for quite a while. Temperatures really aren't going to warm up all that much today. Let's look at the satellite picture and you can see the clouds fairly extensive here. Now we are seeing some breaks down around Beeville and then maybe down towards Carn City. We'll see how long the clouds hold, but we've lowered temperatures just a little bit for this afternoon. 43 degrees right now at the airport, 41 Boulevardy, 39 Comfort, 40 and Tarpley with cloudy skies for most everybody. And here's an important number. Mold is low. Mountain Cedar also dropped off a little bit. We're expecting winds to jump back up tonight, so we could see that Mountain Cedar level increase tomorrow. We'll keep you posted. Cloudy skies, mostly cloudy through noontime, and then by 2 o'clock 59, we'll, we'll shoot for a temperature up around 61 by the 4 o'clock hour. Front comes through tonight, cooler tomorrow, windy too. We'll talk about those winds coming up here in just a few minutes. Guys. Checking uh, Transcad right now. We have some leftover low clouds and fog, depending on where you're at. There's 1604 in Houseman on the northwest side. A little bit of leftovers out there at 2D1 near the quarry. New this morning at 9, the man accused of beating a 93-year-old man to death has been charged with murder. That's right. According to the arrest report, Guadalupe Andrew Martinez was sitting outside an east side convenience store back in August when he was attacked. The report states that 24 year old Damien KK Hernandez punched and kicked the victim in the head and face. Martinez died about a month later at a rehab center. After an investigation, the Bear County Medical Examiner's Office determined his death was caused by the attack. Hernandez was initially charged with injury to the elderly, but is now charged with murder. His bond is set at $500,000. Other top stories we're following today. We now know the name of a woman arrested overnight after police say she stabbed another woman. She has been identified as 29-year-old Amy Diana Ramos. The incident happened around 3.30 this morning in the 800 block of Crystal Street on the south side. Investigators say an argument between the two women escalated and turned into a physical fight where the victim was cut in the forearm and the abdomen. And the woman was taken to University Hospital and will recover. Police say Ramos left the scene, but Bear County Sheriff's Office was able to arrest her at her home over on Frio Street. An Amber Alert is still in effect this morning for a missing child who police believe is in grave or immediate danger. Police searching for one-year-old uh, Javon Simpson. He was last seen in Pearland over southwest of Houston. Was wearing a white onesie and blue or black sweatpants. Police are also looking for 22-year-old Jada Williams in connection with a disappearance. She has glasses with a black frame and has tattoos on both arms. Investigators say Williams drives a silver 2017 Hyundai Elantra. If you have any information on this case, you are asked at call Pearland Police, the department at 281-997-4176. As we mentioned in the night at nine, UT Health San Antonio will start administering COVID-19 vaccines today. They received nearly 6,000 doses from Pfizer yesterday morning. UT Health will start first giving the vaccine to healthcare workers, including doctors, nurses, students, and care team members this afternoon. Several more hospitals in Bear County should receive their share of the vaccine by the end of the week. Now, UT Health has invited KSAT to be there when that first, first dose of the vaccine is administered. Kind of a big deal. We will be live streaming the event on our website right around 1 p.m. today. In your morning headlines, a volcano eruption, a man saved after falling through the ice in Utah, and a dog literally eating a student's homework, all caught on camera. Max Massey joins us live in studio. Max, you say there was a scary situation in the state of Maine. It started all over a mask. It did. It started all over a mask. A store owner in Maine had a close call during an argument over a mask. Scary to say the least. So take a look right here. This is the parking lot of the store. As you can see, someone pulling out, they actually try to get in front of them, and then this is where it gets dangerous, right there. Terrifying situation. So it was an argument that started over a mask. It escalated so quickly. A customer even tried to run the guy over, as you just saw. Now, Mark Call and his brother, they own the Shop and Save in Cornish, Maine. Now, they take it upon themselves to approach people who don't wear masks. Earlier this week, one customer's reaction could have landed Mark in the hospital even worse. So Mark actually offered that customer a mask, but he said the man became angry. It escalated the situation, and Mark asked him to leave the store. He says the man picked up a cart, threw it at him, and threw it to other customers. Then Mark and his brother followed him outside to his car, get his license plate, give it to law enforcement. Then this happened. I stepped over as he backed out. I stepped into the parking space that he backed out of and I saw him put it in neutral and looked him right in the face and I couldn't believe it. He put it in drive and just drove straight at me. 
Now, luckily, Mark is OK, a little bit shaken, but happy to be live. Deputies did later make an arrest. The report says 63 year old Robert Sanborn now facing charges of felony reckless conduct. All right, time to take a look at Italy. Look at this amazing piece of Mother Nature right here. This is Mount Edna that provided a spectacular night show on Sunday, erupting in south southeastern Sicily on the south slope, led up by explosions and ash emissions. Now, the giant orange fountain of lava spewing towards the sky could be seen from nearby cities, although volcanic ash clouds can cause flight disruptions. Luckily, nearby airports were operating as normal. Authorities reporting no danger to towns around the mountain, but some cars, streets, and balconies were covered in ash. Workers, locals worked to clean it all up. And from one story of Mother Nature to another, take a look at this. This is Australia. Crazy storms, as you can see, causing part of the bay to collapse. Now, this is the famous Byron Bay Beach. A lot of it actually swept away. Coastlines along eastern Australia being battered as a powerful storm barrels through the area. And you can see the damaged walkway collapsing right under the guy right here. This is being hit by powerful waves, bringing heavy rain, strong winds, and abnormally high tides. Officials have issued evacuation orders for lie lowing towns, warning of even possible flooding. And next up, back here in the States, a terrifying situation in Utah. Take a look at this. This is the scene right in Utah. We're told a guy went to go ice fishing, and that's when it got super dangerous. He fell through the ice, and it wasn't just him. It was him and his dog. Dramatic body cam video showing the officers actually pulling that guy. That's what they're doing right there. They're using a rope, and they're pulling him out of the ice, out of that icy water. Now, this is Mantua Reservoir. A man who was rescued told troopers he was on his way out to begin ice fishing. He was trying to avoid an existing crack in the ice when it actually broke right under him. He was about 300 to 400 yards from the shoreline. Put that into perspective, that's three to four football fields. Now, he and his dog went under the water. Then the man actually grabbed the dog. Listen to this. He put the dog over his shoulders, started treading water, and was able to save the dog. We're going to talk about that in a second. The, high the hikers actually called this rescue a miracle. Troopers say the victim luckily only suffered minor lacerations, mild to severe hypothermia. Guys, that dog, perfectly safe. And next up, look, we've all heard the cliche excuse the dog ate your homework. But teachers, if you're out there watching right now, right here is actual video proof right there. Gotcha. A pair of peckish pups in the Philippines caught in the act eating their human brother's homework. It's all clip casher. All right. Security cameras. The larger dog named Sam. He can be seen right here sniffing around that homework. It actually tried to use a PlayStation controller as a way to keep the homework down. Clearly, it didn't work. The dog dragged the documents down to the ground. They began tearing it up. The students, when they woke up, they were so confused to see their homework shredded on the floor. It wasn't until they looked at the security cameras that they realized the dogs had literally eaten their homework. So guys, have you ever encountered any of this? I can't believe this. <laughs> I, I color, call me skeptical. Uh huh. Um, because it was so conveniently placed ah. there on that, mm. that dresser. You think it was staged? Everybody was in the camera shot. It just it looked so. Do you think the kids actually did their homework? I don't know. I can't Ooh. confirm. I can't confirm or deny any of that. Well, from my observation mm. in general, from virtual school at home, now it's harder to eat homework because some of the stuff we have to oh, turn in on iPad. Spoken like a true mom. Yeah, no <laughs> excuses. It's harder to eat the homework these days. Yeah, you can't eat a whole iPad or a laptop. <laughs> Thank so. you, Max. No. Nice guys. 9 to 11 right now, 43 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9. The woman in New York has broken the record for the world's largest female afro. We're going to take a look. Disappointing news for UTSA fans. The bowl game sketch for this weekend against Southern Methodist has been canceled. Max is back to tell you why. We probably imagine why a little bit later in the newscast. Also, the top 10 most watched videos of the year on KSET.com from a Thunderbirds flyover to snakes in a pond. Our Eric Hernandez will join us to break down which stories had our viewers talking. Snakes in a pond? Thought yeah, it was snakes. not a plane. Okay. A pond. <laughs> uh, the stocks right now, the Dow is up about 95 points at 29,955.
welcome back. It's 915 from Thunderbirds to Snakes. KSAT.com has put together the 10 most watched videos of 2020. Erica Hernandez joining us here in the studio with a look at some of those videos. Get us up to speed, Erica. Hi, good morning, guys. Well, 2020 was a year full of both good and a whole lot of bad. And videos that resonated with KSAT viewers are also a mix of highs and lows. I'm going to take you back to a few of those stories. The first one had us all looking to the sky. As the pandemic was in full swing in May, Air Force's Thunderbirds took to the sky as part of America Strong, a recognition and show of national solidarity. This video here shows you inside the cockpit of the pilot's perspective during the flyover in San Antonio. I don't know if you guys remember back from this from the summer, but oh, this sure was do. incredible. Yes. I mean, people were stopped on the side of the roads. They were seeing this as they went through as they went through San Antonio. It was pretty amazing feet and I'm, I'm glad it was it was kind of perfect timing too because we were really getting restless with the pandemic and just to kind of take a break and get outside and with the family and look up and it, see this it was awesome. I also remember there was a chase plane getting kind of as acting as a spotter and also getting great video footage and people thought it was part of maybe a missing man formation but it was just a chase, chase plane. plane yeah but yeah no that was a great video and I'm glad that was one of the top videos of the year oh, that was very yeah. cool yes very next video was a top one for weeks and went viral University Health System nurse Tommy Austin shared her step step-by-step -step instructions on how to make a mask in case a shortage took place. The mask was so good it was tested to have better filtration than the N95 mask. She showed us all how to make the mask by giving us a step-by-step -step guide. A big part of the mask was using AC filters as part of the design and I think they made up to 6,000 of these masks they shared with other hospitals here yep. in San Antonio. It was really amazing to see her do this and I mean, it was better than the N95s. That was amazing how she put this all together. And so it went viral. Yes, it did. And it went this, national. This is Tommy, right? Yes, yeah. yeah. We've interviewed her many times, and she was always uh, on top of things through early in the pandemic. And so I can see why this is uh, most. Yeah, and I think it ended up going national with a lot of other hospitals. I know their plan at the time was to share this as well with hospitals in New York at the time when they were in a, a hotspot. Thank wow. you, Ms. Austin. <laughs> <laughs> and this final video I want to share had us all squirming. A KSAT viewer was on a bike ride when she came upon this puddle of snakes. It's so hard to tell just how many are in the pond, but it looks like at least 50. KSAT at the time when this came out in May reached out to a local herpetologist who said the pond was full of baby water snakes, not water moccasins, if that makes you feel any better. <laughs> it is not uncommon for them to swim together, and they are not venomous. But still, if I see a pond of this, I'm I'm out like I'm not sticking around to get video or what if one of them like jumps out or like swims out at I you? I know if I mm -mm. see one I'm out. So <laughs> yeah. there's no way to get an accurate count because nobody wants to stick around and start no. counting. <laughs> and, and look they're just everywhere it's crazy I've never seen this before but apparently it is common for baby water snakes water to snakes. do this so yeah. Watch out for those ponds. So, yeah. yeah. No, thank you. Now, we have, of course, more videos. It's top 10. You can see them all right now on KSAT.com. Eight more over there. Okay. Yep. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks, guys. Bye, Erica. Let's check on weather right now. 43 degrees. Another slow warm up here in the Alamo City this morning. And the good news is uh, we haven't had any rain, so there's no puddles for the snakes to be in. Ah, so that is good news. Oh, wait, seven more videos over there is what <laughs> I meant to say. You just showed us three. Yes, thank seven you. more. I, okay. I did the math. <laughs> Anyway, Justin, sorry. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, let's look at the uh, the picture here, what we got going on across the state of Texas. Area of low pressure moving through the Texas Panhandle. There is snow associated with this. In fact, some heavy snow starting to move around Oklahoma City, parts of the Texas Panhandle. And Oklahoma just got a ton of snow from this last system, so pretty incredible. They're getting back-to-back -back snowstorms here. And so there will be some treacherous travel up there. Obviously, we're not dealing with any wintry weather. But this front will make its way through as we go into tonight. What it will do is kick up the winds, and then we'll have to watch the mountain cedar count very closely tomorrow. So just a heads up, we're not expecting any rain with this. Out ahead of it, it's cloudy. We're getting a good surge of moisture. Well, I shouldn't say a good surge, but a surge of moisture. And then, of course, behind it, you have the windy conditions. We mentioned the dew points. They're low everywhere, okay? But as you get down into South Texas, you're starting to see these dew points jump up into the 40s. And with the air temperature, uh, right there in the, in the 40s, uh, the dew point and temperature getting close, and that's why we're seeing some fog, and we've seen that low cloudiness. And these dew points may try to come up a little bit more before that front comes through. Here's the other issue, cloud cover. Uh, and it's pretty extensive right now, stretching up and down I-35, but we are starting to see it back off across the hill country, so clearing skies, Rock Springs, Lakey, and then we've got some clearing skies, Beeville to Victoria. Temperatures today will be highly dependent on how quickly these clouds go away. I think we're probably still looking at mostly cloudy conditions through about noontime. So temperatures here 
maybe a little bit cooler than we initially thought. We're thinking the low 60s for highs, but if the sun pops out earlier, maybe we do get into the mid 60s. Right now we're shooting for 61 this afternoon. There's a look at the time lapse and uh, you can see the low clouds and the fog that have drifted in. 43 degrees right now. Dew point is at 40. I mentioned that number in the dew point getting pretty close there. North Northeast Julie winds at about five. The fog uh, extensive up around Bernie stage. Kerrville, Hondo, Uvalde down to Creso Springs. That's kind of the corridor there where we are seeing some fairly dense fog. There's a little bit here around San Antonio, but not as bad as it is uh, off to the west. Temperature wise, 45 in New Braunfels, 43 here in San Antonio, 41 Kerrville, 41 in Uvalde. And I mentioned the wind gusts. They're not going to be so bad today, but look at these wind gusts as we go into tonight. Once that front arrives, we could see some gusts up over 30 miles per hour. So it's going to be another wind event. It's mainly overnight, but tomorrow morning we'll still get some gusts up around 20, 25, which means wind chills tomorrow morning could be in the 20s and 30s. Just a heads up. So here's what our forecast looks like. Those clouds clear out. Front comes through tonight. Doesn't bring any rain or any cloud cover with it. And then as we get into tomorrow, clear skies. And then by Friday, this is five o'clock Friday, clouds come back. And this is out ahead of our next storm system, which is set to move in. It looks like midday Saturday. We could get a couple showers with this early on Saturday. Again, it's a small window. I think our eastern counties probably have the best shot at seeing some rain. And by Saturday evening, all of this is cleared out. And we're looking for a pretty decent weekend, I think, as it stands right now. Forecast for today, it'll be slow to clear, but we'll get up into the 50s and eventually 60s this afternoon. And then breezy as we get into tonight, if not windy. And we'll go uh, 58 tomorrow cooler. We'll start off at 32 Thursday morning. So a freeze possible here in San Antonio. And then we mentioned that slight chance of rain Friday night into Saturday morning. But right now, highs on Saturday, upper 60s and mid 60s on Sunday. Not bad at all. Wow, Thursday morning. We will be prepared, Justin. Yep. Thank you. 922, 43 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, it's the largest female Afro in the world. Why this New York woman decided to go for the record and how she's inspiring other women across the globe. Check this out. A 32-year-old fashion designer in New York has just broken the Guinness World Record for the largest female Afro. When styled, Simone Williams' hair is more than eight inches tall, nine inches wide. Total circumference is four feet, 10 inches. Wow, Williams says her hair attracts a lot of attention, which is why she decided to go for the record. Williams told Guinness that she started growing out her hair nine years ago. Since receiving the record, Williams says that she's been contacted by people all over the world who consider her to be an inspiration. Very cool. 926 there is much more ahead on GMSA at 9. And could the NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament be played entirely in San Antonio? It's possible. Max will be back to discuss. 70-year-old roll of film was recently developed after being discovered inside a vintage camera. Now there's a worldwide quest underway to find the people in the pictures. A new change in the coronavirus discovered overseas. So what does it mean for the COVID-19 vaccine? We're going to get some answers from a local doctor next. And welcome back. It's 930. Just as the first doses of the COVID-19 vaccine started being distributed in the U.S., a new type of coronavirus has popped up in Europe. So what does the change in the virus itself mean for the vaccine? Our Tiffany Huerta spoke to a local doctor to find out. We've currently identified over a thousand cases with this variant, predominantly in the south of England. A surge of COVID-19 cases in southern England may be associated with a new variant of COVID-19. UT Health San Antonio professor Dr. Tyler Curiel says while it may be easier to transmit from person to person. It doesn't look like it makes the disease you get any more serious than if you didn't have this mutation or if you had some different strain. The World Health Organization agrees. Curiel says viruses mutate all the time. Viruses are always looking to find the best way to survive. Curiel says there are at least seven major groups of this coronavirus. The L strain that originated in China has gone through a couple of mutations and it spun off another uh, strain called the S strain and that spun off a strain called the G strain. The G strain is the predominant strain now in the United States and in Europe. In England, what they're finding now is in the G strain, there are slight 
different mutations within it. So will the current COVID-19 vaccine still work? There's no evidence at all that any vaccine efficacy is going to be compromised. That doesn't mean that it couldn't happen. It could. Kirill says things will continue to change as we learn more about this virus. Tomorrow, we might get new information like a mutation that really is evil or really bad, which hasn't happened. But if that happens, then we'll change our thinking, not because we're wrong or because we're fools or we're running around in circles. It's just because this is a new virus. It's happening right in front of our eyes. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. As we mentioned earlier in the newscast, doctors and nurses at UT Health San Antonio will begin receiving the COVID-19 vaccine today. But just like creating the vaccine, getting it to all Americans who want it will be a months long process. Health experts say the vaccine won't be widely available until late spring or early summer. Dr. Fred Campbell with UT Health says the efficiency of the vaccine depends solely on everyone getting it as soon as possible. The larger the number of people who hesitate to get the vaccine, the longer it will be until we have what's considered herd immunity, when the incidence of infection will drop dramatically. For the foreseeable future, Dr. Campbell says we all need to keep wearing those masks, social distancing, and washing our hands. And we're going to have more in-depth coverage on the COVID-19 vaccine during this week's episode on Case That Explains, including how they work, their safety, and the monumental task of widespread distribution. Case That Explains, the COVID-19 vaccines will be available to stream this Thursday. You can watch it on our website, ksat.com slash explained. You can also stream it on the KSAT TV app, available on Roku, Fire Stick, Apple TV, and most other streaming devices. And taking a look outside with live cam, it's not in the 30s anymore, but still a chilly 43 degrees. It's chilly and actually a, a little bit damp in spots. We've got some fog that's developed and it's most noticeable after the west of San Antonio. So places like Hondo, this is where we're getting a picture in on a KSAC Connect. You see cattle there off in the distance and some healthy cattle there. Uh, a little bit of fog, lower visibility. Uh, in spots like Hondo and out towards Uvalde. Well, let's look at the visible satellite picture and you can see where the clouds are setting up basically along I-35. That's where they are thickest. We are seeing clearing out near Del Rio, Lakey and Rock Springs, also Victoria and Bevo. But in the middle, we're sort of sandwiched in with with some cloud cover here. Temperature wise 43 at the airport, but it feels like 40 when you factor in the light breeze we have. Uh, wind chills 41 in Uvalde 39 in a hondo so it is a chilly start we'll see temperatures eventually get up into the 60s this afternoon but we've got to lose this cloud cover first and that will likely take to about lunchtime southeast chilly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour that changes dramatically though tonight we'll get northwest chilly winds and they'll become very gusty we'll talk more about those winds and what the rest of the week looks like coming up here in just a couple minutes guys Thank you, Justin. If you have to head out in the next few minutes, there's what it looks like at uh, 35 and loop 410. There's I-10 over at Probant. And the Spurs are set for the second tip off of the preseason tonight and possibly big news for the women's NCAA tournament coming to the Alamo City. But we start with the latest on UTSA's bowl game that was supposed to be set for this week. A lot's happened in the last hour or so. <laughs> so let's get the very latest on the bowl game situation with Max Massey. All right, guys, so it, it's very complicated. You actually just brought it to everyone's attention that there will be a new bowl game. But before we get there, we have to establish what happened to the old bowl game. Let's do it. Okay. So there were reports that uh, SMU had to bow out of this weekend's, what was supposed to be this weekend's, Tropical Smoothie Frisco Bowl against UTSA because of COVID-19 issues. But just as a few minutes ago, breaking news and good news, great news for UTSA. The Roadrunners will still be playing in a bowl game. They're going to be playing in the Serve Pro First Responders Bowl. That makes sense, Military City USA. And it's not going to be this week. It's going to be December 26th on ABC. Shout out KSAT. The opponent, though, not yet announced. Now, I'm very hopeful UTSA, because remember, this, this is only the second time in the 10-year history of UTSA football that the Roadrunners will be playing in a bowl game. They accepted the invitation to the Tropical Smoothie Cafe Frisco Bowl. Sorry, I said that five times fast. <laughs> it was supposed to be the first game of the 2020 bowl season. In his first year at UTSA, head coach Jeff Trailer led the Roadrunners to a 7-4 overall record, 5-2 mark in Conference USA West. So, cautious optimism going forward. And next up, the women's NCAA tournament and what the plan is as of now. So it is likely that San Antonio could become a bubble of sorts. 
for players and coaches of this year's tournament. Now, it's not just going to be the Final Four. It'll be all 64 teams. The NCAA announced that San Antonio will likely host all those teams in the tournament this coming March. The move was helped or made to help mitigate the risks of COVID-19 and matches that of the men's tournament, which the NCAA said last month, will also be played in a single area, most likely Indianapolis. <clears throat> Here's the thing. We were already supposed to be the site of the 2021 Final Four, so this is just kind of expanding it, bringing in more teams. The NCAA has now begun talks with the city of San Antonio on hosting the entire thing. The organization hopes to have plans finalized by the end of January at the latest. And how can we even talk about sports without talking about the Spurs? Go Spurs, go. Guys, I'm going to be honest, I convinced myself the Spurs are a playoff team this year, but... It's going to be a concentrated defensive effort and a few younger guys to step up. We do get another look at those younger guys and an adjusted role for some of the vets tonight. 7 p.m. The Spurs playing the Rockets and James Harden is expected to play. There are so many things to talk about. I don't want to get on a soapbox here, but I just put in four things. James Harden, there's so much drama with him because he may or may not want out of Houston. He then was in a couple clubs in the last few weeks, obviously breaking pro player protocol during COVID-19. He went through all the proper testing, so he is good to play. And then... This is just preseason, so we get another look at Devin Vassell. And, oh, they're giving me a one-on-one -on -one again. This is good. I can All right. a little rant. All right. <laughs> so, guys, this is very exciting. We also saw LaMarcus Aldridge shoot a lot more threes. If you remember, in the bubble play, they kind of did that small ball thing. But as, you know, Greg Popovich likes to do, he zigs when everyone all zags. He went a big starting lineup in the last time. So we'll see if they stay with that or they kind of go back to small ball. That'll be interesting, or LaMarcus just starts throwing up 10 threes a game. But again, this is preseason, so you get to experiment, see some of the younger guys. The real season starts December 22nd. The Spurs' first real matchup where the record actually counts to go to the playoffs, that is December 23rd, and they are starting off hot with the Memphis Grizzlies. All right, so Sears has a soapbox. What I propose for you, Max, is we have a Max's Massive Rant animation Ooh. or something like okay. that. Okay. Okay. I like that. I'm, I'm okay. in for it. So, but that is cool. My takeaway from this, not only Spurs playing tonight, but UTSA has a date with KSAT and ABC on December 26th. There you go. And so we'll wait to hear who the opponent will be. Right. And no more smoothie. No, Frisco. the Frisco Smoothie Cafe Tropical Bowl. Smoothie Maybe, Cafe, yes. which we, I found one in San Antonio yesterday. They're already here. No oh, really? Kidding. Yeah, they're a big chain. Very yep. fancy. Doesn't matter now, though. We're moving on, right? We're moving on. <laughs> Serve pro. Upward and onward. <laughs> Thank you, Max. Thanks, guys. 939, 43 degrees. And a 70-year-old mystery on film gives new meaning to caught on camera, and NASA releases never-before-seen photos captured in deep space. That's coming up in today's Take a Look at This. Welcome back, 942, a mystery that lay dormant inside a vintage camera has now unfolded for all the world to see. CNN's Jeremy Roth has that and more in today's Take a Look at This. A 70-year-old roll of film was recently discovered inside a vintage camera, and the images that were developed not only provide a fascinating window into the past, they've sparked a worldwide quest to identify the stars of the photos. The 1935 Leica camera was purchased years ago by Irish collector William Fagan. The recently developed images found inside, which Fagan estimates date back to around 1950, seem to tell a story of a young woman and a man traveling through Europe together. Fagan spread word of the photos and wrote an article about them, which has since been featured in publications worldwide. Wild theories on the mysterious couple abound, including suggestions they could be movie stars or royalty. Fagan is calling the phenomenon photographic archaeology and says regardless of the outcome, he's pleased this visual virtual time capsule is bringing joy and fascination to so many. Another collection of previously unseen images is bringing wonder to the masses, but these photos hail from the heavens. NASA and its partners are celebrating the 30th anniversary of the Hubble Space Telescope by releasing a treasure trove of never-before-seen images captured over its career. More than 50 images of 30 celestial objects debuted in the release. The images had been used for research over the years, but this is the first time they've been released to the public. The Hubble Telescope was launched in April of 1990 and has been upgraded over the years. It continues to make groundbreaking discoveries in deep space. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. Back to the, the old photos from the 50s, there was one clue in there. There's a, there's a license plate on that vintage car right. from the 50s, and I know records have their limitations, but Europeans are 
fairly well known for keeping a lot of records. So I wonder if you did some digging, you could do some research on that car. Maybe in the 50s though, but yeah. uh, cool photos. Yeah, very cool. Gonna, it almost looks like a photo shoot, you know, so yeah. I wonder, hmm, we'll like, have to. Like a time capsule. You'd be a good investigator. There are things that you catch on to. I'm like, what? <laughs> All I saw was the plate. I didn't write it down, but I wrote 50s license plate. Wow. So there's the limitation of my research skills. Good job, Mark. 43 degrees out of San Antonio International. What's up, Justin? Yeah, Mark, you're like a spy, man. I know. Like He's on top of things. James Bond over there. <laughs> uh, let's look at what we got going on with Mount Cedar. It's at uh -oh. 30 today. Okay, so that's not bad. Uh, we're actually doing pretty good to start December. We look at the arc here. It typically peaks, as we've mentioned, in January and it starts to wind down by, uh, say, Valentine's Day. We've had a couple readings here, 30, near 50, last couple days, but nothing that's huge. Nothing has jumped off the page. I want to see what happens tomorrow because we're going to get some gusty winds and that may contribute to some higher numbers. We'll see. Uh, so far, again, it's been sort of a later start than what we've seen last couple of years when it comes to the uh, mountain cedar. Here's the setup. We have an area of low pressure sitting across the Texas Panhandle. Some snow out ahead of it. Places like Kansas, Oklahoma City now seeing the snow. They just had a snowstorm. Here's another one moving into Oklahoma. And this is going to produce some pretty good snowfall totals, I think, up to the north of Texas. Nothing here in the Lone Star State, though, other than uh, the northwestern or northeastern part of the Texas Panhandle. Cloudy for us. We've got cloud and clouds and moisture moving in and then windy behind the system. And that's what we have to look forward to. So we have some bad satellite, satellite frames here, but just bear with me. You can see the clouds stretching from San Antonio up to Dallas and then that snow that is moving northeast now through Oklahoma City. A little closer look here at Bear County. And we're still looking at cloudy skies at the moment. Some breaks, though, down to the south, and it does look like this is trying to work north. We've also got a clearing line that's working south and east, so they should eventually meet and come together. I think it probably takes another couple of hours, though, before that happens and we get full sun. And so because of that, we've lowered temperatures just a little bit. It looks pretty murky outside at the moment. Uh, we're at 43 degrees at the airport, 44 Stinson, 45 Kelly, 45 at Randolph. And we're just not going to get temperatures to go up much the next couple of hours with these clouds in place. We've also been dealing with fog. Places like Bernie, uh, visibility is down about a quarter of a mile. That's the case in Hondo, too. So the corridor of fog there, that does stretch down to Carrizo Springs as well. Although some improvement there just within the last hour. A little bit of fog here in San Antonio, too. Temperatures in the 40s for the most part. And as we look at the wind gust forecast, the winds really are going to pick up tonight. We can see some gusts up over 30 miles per hour, say 10 p.m. to 3 a.m. That's a corridor where we're going to get some very strong winds and even some breezy winds tomorrow morning. So wind chill values will start off in the 30s and even 20s tomorrow morning. So just heads up, definitely jacket weather to start your Wednesday. Uh, we'll see that front move through tonight. That's what kicks up the winds. No rain with that. A couple quiet days here, Thursday and Friday. Or th uh, tomorrow and Thursday, but by Friday we'll get some cloud cover back in here, more moisture. And by Friday night we could see a couple showers. Saturday morning too, a few showers will be possible as our next system moves in. Best chance is going to be east of San Antonio. Once again, we're just getting a glancing blow here. Not great rain chances for today. Some clearing, 61 degrees this afternoon, and then turning breezy if not windy tonight. 58 tomorrow. I will point out we start off at 32 Thursday morning. But 63 for high, 64 Friday, mostly cloudy, 20% chance of rain Saturday morning, and then clearing out some Saturday afternoon into Sunday, guys. Thank you, Justin. 948 now, 43 degrees. We'll be right back. Have we got deals for you? KSAT Deals is here to save you money right now. Welcome to KSAT Deals at KSATDeals.com. We have a long list of bargains for you, but we only have time for two today, one for the bedroom and one for the gadget savvy shopper. Let's start in the bedroom. The Bamboo Comfort six piece luxury sheet set is very breathable. The microfiber and bamboo help to reduce allergens. Now the retail price $109, but the case at deals price $32.99. That's a 70% discount. Moving on to the smartwatch. This tracks everything from calories burned to your sleeping and blood oxygen levels. It works both with iOS and Android. Now the retail price $199. Case that deal, $44.99. That's a 77% discount. Now you can get these two along with several others only on caseatdeals.com. This essay salutes holiday greeting is brought to you by Jason's Water Systems.
Hi, this is Eric with Jason's Water Systems. I would like to thank the military, the veterans, and also the first responders, and we appreciate you. And you guys have a very Merry Christmas. Thank you. And if you're looking for some holiday cheer as we count down to the new year this Friday, you'll want to tune in to the SA Live Christmas Primetime Show. It will include music, food, great San Antonians giving back, Fiona Mike also using their craft skills in a crafting competition. The pair will be coached by two of the best crafters in town with a budget of only $20. How many do no you talk, have to do? No talking during the test. <laughs> Mike taking it very seriously. You're going to have to watch Friday at 7 p.m. to see what they come up with. And here's a hint. Mike is using picture frames to create his masterpiece. And Fiona, lots and lots of pom-poms. Plus, they may have a special Zoom planned with someone from the North Pole. We still have uh, need your help, rather, to make sure every kid in SA's Youth Out of Time program gets a stocking this holiday season. Our KSAC community partners are helping the nonprofit fill stockings with arts and crafts, small toys, and snacks. We're about 100 stockings short of our 650 stocking goal, and time is running short. You have until Friday to donate items or money, so $25 will cover the cost of one stocking. We have a list of items needed and a link to donate on KSACcommunity.com. May have seen this on the early edition of DMSA. A early morning fire broke out at a yard crowded with vehicles. I'll tell you how a brand new fire investigations team is helping crews figure out the case. That's coming up today on the News at Noon. And taking a look outside with Trans Guide, looking there at 16 of our Hausman and 281 at the quarry. Things looking pretty okay right now. Yes. Still a little bit of haze there, maybe a little bit of fog in spots. That should lift. We're going to get clouds for a while longer, and then we should see some clearing this afternoon. 61, it will turn windy tonight. We'll see some gusty winds into tomorrow morning. 58 on your Wednesday, and then look for another uh, increase in cloud cover, and maybe a slight chance of rain Friday night into Saturday morning. All right, there's a new store coming to San Antonio called Black Friday Deals. There's already one in Houston, and it's super popular, and these deals are amazing. So just in case we forget to tell you, you can find this on KSET.com. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's going to be a new store that will be located at 100 Crossroads Boulevard in Balcones Heights. Um, and then Mark just reminded me, this is not where you find the big target. This is actually a shopping center uh, on Fredericks, uh, closer to Fredericksburg. Yeah, next to La Michoacana Meat yes, Market. Yes, yes. Yep, so here's the deal. Uh, they are going to stock uh, mostly overstock and return items, and the new location expected to be stocked with the same type of merchandise. All the items available for purchase are the same price, no matter what, regardless of the original value, depending on the day of the week you're shopping. So this is crazy. Uh, they have Friday, like, ex $7, Saturday, $5, Sunday, 4 Monday, 3 Tuesday, $2, and then Wednesday, is that for real? 50 cents. 50 cents? Everything in the store. And then they're closed on Thursdays to restock. But again, we're waiting to hear more about the opening of the Black Friday Deal store here in San Antonio over in Balcones Heights. When we get more information on when that is going to happen, we will let you know. But for now, you can share more info, as you said, on KSAT.com. So yeah. I'm guessing all the good stuff goes quick. you got to get there fast. I, yes, you do. Early risers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what I would imagine. You guys can watch us and then go shop. Have a great day.